we talk competition all the time. And, um, and you know, it, it doesn't matter if you've been here for two years and been a starter and you've, you know, you've had a ton of catches or touchdowns or, or you've had a lot of snaps at a position. I mean, everybody that comes in there has got an opportunity to win a job constantly. And, um, you know, Marvin, Marvin Mims is a young man that came in. And, 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 and the first thing about Marvin is, he is a, he's got high character. He's a very hard worker. So he's setting the examples. Again, we, you know, we're always talking to our players, showing videos of, of, of former players, past players, NFL greats, uh, whether it's, you know, a football or, or a, a story in baseball or, or boxing of, of what you have to do in order to get to where you want to get, in order to be successful, in order to be good. And, um, you know, he's one of those guys that kind of falls in the line of, of how hard he works. And he's extremely intelligent. He's somebody that you only have to tell something one time. You tell him one time in the meeting room, and you better be right because he's going to do that way every single time. But he brought up the level of competition, and that's what we, that's what we have to have. The, I mean, the, the better he is, the better the next guy is. If you want to catch the ball more, you better, you better be playing better than Marvin Mims or you better be playing better than, than Drake Stroops or, or whoever it is at that position. Was it, if you don't mind, was it similar? To, did you see the same impact CD in 2017? Did he have that kind of impact doing that room? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, very, very similar. You know, somewhat kind of, um, kind of quiet young men just kind of go, up, go about their business. Uh, they're not somebody that's a, a, a very vocal guy. It's it's interesting though. Marvin is starting to become a little bit more vocal, um, and I think I kind of get that out of him because I'm a vocal person and I challenge a lot. Uh, so um, you know, especially in drills out there, if I'm anywhere near, he's going to find me, and uh, he's going to make damn sure that uh, that he that he that that I feel him whenever he comes and attacks me, whether it's running a route or 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 you know pat, or um, you know blocking on the perimeter. But I would say those guys are very similar. Um, Marvin's heading in the right direction. Uh, still got a long way to go. Uh, glad he's here with us. Oh, thanks, thanks so much. Have a good week. Thanks, Eric. Ryan Aver and Joe Benner. Hey, Kale. Uh, hey, Brian. Yeah. Hey, I want to ask you about another of your guys, uh, Mario Williams. Uh, what have you uh, seen from him uh, so far? What stands out to you? And just uh, what kind of impact do you think he can have uh, quickly in this offense? He's got a chance to have an impact um, very fast, one of the fastest players on our side of the ball. Um, he's a, um, he, he loves to compete. He loves to practice. He loves to play ball. Um, and um, and he's just he's a, he's a good player. He's he's an intelligent young man. Uh, he's gonna you know he's he's there's an opportunity for him to help us in the in the return game somewhere, especially in special teams. Um, but you know the opportunity for him to be out there and to be able to stretch the field. And uh, and again, as you guys have seen with all our wide receivers, our guys, I mean they're gonna play inside, they're gonna play outside, they're gonna play left side, they're gonna play the right side. But but he's definitely for. For a um, young man that still should be in high school right now, he's awfully impressive out there. And, and, and again, he's just he's he's fast. He's he's got speed. Um, you know, we were talking out there today, and I, I made a comment on the headsets that, you know, you typically just don't see balls overthrown to the real fast guys. They just have they have a, they have a way to go to go attack the ball. And um, again, besides the football side of it. He comes out there every day. He just loves to compete. He's always got a smile on his face. He just he, he, he loves football. He, he loves competition, and he loves football, and um, I'm glad he's here with us. Appreciate it, Kale. Have a good one. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, Kale, you're you know, one of many former OU players now assistants with the program, and you've seen a lot of those guys now in with DeMarco, Joe John, Calvin. I'm curious just – being a coach uh, around those guys and developing that, how easy is it to identify maybe a, a current player that you think is on a trajectory to you know be a coach one day? Is that easy to identify when they're when they're in college playing the game? Well, when you you know when I look back on it, um, you know it's a it's a great question. When I look back on it, you could see the leadership skills that those guys had. Um, you know they were they were competitors. Um, and we've we've had a lot of competitors down here around here, but they were, you know, it it, it takes to something a little bit different to to be able to step right out as a as a young assistant and to be able to lead a room, to be able to have that energy to go on that road and be able to recruit, um, and and to be able to battle, you know, all the top, you know, 
the co uh, college programs across the country. And, um, you know, you look back on it, all, all these guys that are here, you know, from Calvin Thibodeau to, to Joe John to Brian Odom to DeMarco Murray, you know, first of all, you know, very good people, you know, high character guys, guys that never had any problems, never had any problems here, never had any issues, very successful college football players. And some of them had success after college. Um, but, you know, they're dedicated, uh, great character, hard workers. And, um, again, that, that all that stuff kind of typically finds those guys. Thanks so much, Joe. Yes, sir. Thank you. Jason Percy, The Athletic, and then Austin Kirkland. Good morning, Kale. How, How are you? you? Good, Jason. How are you? Good. Hey, I wanted to ask you as a former OU quarterback yourself and someone who's seen Heifel, White, Bradford, all the great ones you've had through the years, what does Spencer do that, that makes him unique and special, and, and how good do you think he can ultimately end up being? Well, you know, you're, you're, naming, you're naming guys that were obviously very successful also. You know, you're naming some guys that were Heisman Trophy quarterbacks. Right, you know, right. um, you know, guys that uh, won a lot of championships, uh, competed at a high level, um, you know, set a lot of records, <clears throat> um, and and definitely feel like you know we feel like that that Spencer's on that trajectory to head in that direction. You know, I think the one thing that's kind of a little bit different in in you know with with Spencer is um, the the ability to make a lot of different throws with a lot of different arm angles, uh, you know. Probably, you know, he throws the ball a lot of times in situations or, or going to his left or going backwards where most coaches would say you don't, you don't, you should not be doing that. Uh, but th this is something that he is, you know, he's, he's worked and he's trained ever since he was in high school. He's spent a lot of time doing that. Um, I can remember we used to watch some of the workouts and um, – that his his trainer you know had him do back home and and a lot of the stuff was different than than most of the true quarterback drills that that you know they have young quarterbacks do. Um, again, he's still got a, a, a lot of his career ahead of him, um, and and in order to get where those guys uh, where they got, um, he still has to do so much. I mean, he he has to be every bit as good in the in the meeting room and spend all that time in the meeting room as he does out on the football field. And and you guys seen him throw the ball around, uh, and and he'll be the first one to tell you. Obviously, I didn't even speak with Coach Riley. I mean, there's still a lot of things that he can do to become a, a better football player. And uh, you know, when you're 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 leading, uh, uh, when you're the quarterback and, and you're you're going to lead this team, you're going to be a captain. I mean, you're. You're, you're voted a captain. You're going to be a captain already, you know, and we haven't voted captains. And I'm not saying – I should not have said that, but, I mean, you guys know what I mean. He's going to be the, yeah, one of the leaders of this team because he's the quarterback of the University of Oklahoma. So there's, there's great responsibilities there. Um, and um, as a young guy, he's – you know, you can – I can see those things. I can see some of the change in him, you know, from last fall to this spring where he's trying to step up and, and, and take more responsibility. Thanks, Kevin. Yes, sir. Austin Kurtwright, OU Daily, and then John Hoover. Hey, Kale. I uh, wanted to ask you about Lincoln specifically. Um, you know, being around him from his first year as a coordinator to being head coach, how has he grown and then how is he able to maneuver last season as, you know, this leader for how hard that last season was with the pandemic? Uh, uh, unbelievable. I mean, he's, he's um, you know, and you hit it. I mean, he's a leader. He, he's – you know, obviously had an opportunity to work with with Coach Stoops for a long time, and Bob was Bob was very very special and one of the very best. Um, you know, I I think the thing that, and I've said this a lot of times about what makes Lincoln so special is, I mean, he gets everything. I mean, it, it, anything that has to do with being the head football coach at the University of Oklahoma, whether it's the compliance or whether it's the finances or, or academics or being a leader or a motivator or a disciplined guy. Um, I mean, he gets all of it, uh, a, a recruiter. There's nothing that, that, it, that comes to a surprise um, that he hasn't already thought out. Um, and, and it's, you know, again, he, he, he has, he was just born with a gift and he obviously has, Spent a lot of time. He's got a lot of great mentors that has helped him throughout his, you know, career. But he just he's he's phenomenal at everything he does. And um, again, he's he's not only 
you know, what, what you see X's and O's, he's every bit as good every, everywhere else as being a leader. Um, you know, he, he knows how to motivate individual players. He knows how to motivate this team. Uh, he knows how to discipline this team. Uh, this team follows him. Um, our coaches follow him. And, and when you find the, the, who I believe that are the great ones out in society, people tend to follow because of the things that they do and how they act. And um, he, he's, um, he's, you know, again, he's the, he's the best in our business. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind he's the best in our business. I haven't worked with, you know, obviously everybody, but I'm not even going to – I wouldn't even want to think about working for somebody else as long as I can work with Lincoln Riley. Thanks, Thanks Dale. Dale. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to John Hoover and then Terry Murdoch. Hey, Kale, how's it going? Good to good, see you again. Good, John. Good seeing you, buddy. Yeah, so recruiting, you're kind of your forte. Uh, it's changed a little bit over the past few years. Uh, I'm sure you're glad to get the dead period out of the way finally. But overall, in general, you've got the one-time transfer rule coming up. Um, you've got NIL legislation that's coming up. Recruiting is going to change even more, obviously. So where do you see it maybe going in the next few years, five years? Um, what, what kind of challenges? Would you expect that you'll, <coughs> that you'll face? And then um, is there anything that's going to happen that people aren't talking about right now that maybe you're anticipating could be a problem? Well, I don't, I don't know if there's anything. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff that's kind of started to happen has is, is been happening. You know, it, it's, it's, there's, there's, um, it, it's definitely going to change. Um, you know, with the, with the one-time transfer rule, uh, you just wonder – you know, it kind of, you know, initially it kind of makes you think of, you know, what, what basketball can do, you know. Um, you know, how guys can put their name in a, in a you know, I'm going to go to the NFL, or I'm going to go to the NBA, but I'm not going to uh, sign, sign with anybody because I might want to come back. I, I don't know how that, all that's going to unfold. And those are decisions that, that each university and head coach and president and athletic director has got to, to make. Um, but it, it, we are, it is going to be challenging moving forward there's no doubt um, we, we're we're about to start exploring things in college football that that has never happened before um, and I, I think that you know the relationships that uh, your coaches and the staff has with your players um, has always been extremely important I think it's got to be even more important now I think you got to know where your players are um, you know mindset when it comes to um, you know, being a part of this program and wanting to stick with this program um, instead of guys just, you know, wanting to jump ship and go somewhere else. And, um, but, you know, we, we're, again, we're, we're going in, 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 into stuff right now that we've never been into right now. But as a staff and as Coach Riley, you know, we're, we're trying to, in our minds, we're trying to think of what other things could possibly be happening. We're, we're trying to, uh, prepare ourselves for something to happen in, in six months or a year from now. And, and you know, w recruiting has changed so much, as you said, over years. There's so many different things that have changed. Um, you know, the social media has made it, you know, has changed the just the world we live in itself, but it's also changed the recruiting side of it. So um, don't really want to go into what we think are ideas of things that could possibly happen down the road. But but it is. It's, it's going to be challenging. But you know what? It's going to be challenging for everybody. And uh, it is what it is. And at the end of the day, we got to get the guys ready that are here uh, to be good football players and to help us win football games.